Greetings, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to thank you, first of all, for joining me today. And um, I pray that you will listen carefully to this video and that you will be a partaker of this thing that God has called me to. Um, the Lord has called me to a great assignment for the month of September, which I am declaring as the month of prayer. In fact, we are in a season of prayer. This is a call to prayer. Now, prayer is always in order. It's always in order. Prayer is a necessity. Prayer should always be our top priority and not our last resort. But prayer is always in order. But I believe that God is ushering us into a season, a season of, of, of prayer. I'm talking about fervent, earnest prayer. And this assignment that God has given me for the month of September is awesome. It's been on my heart now for several weeks. And um, I think I've kind of been procrastinating a little bit. But I'm the type of person that I like to make sure that in all that I do, that A, God is glorified. But B, I always like to make sure that it is the Holy Spirit who is leading me. Not my own spirit, not my own ideology, but the Spirit of God. And so I'm certain and I'm confident and I'm sure that it is God who has led me to this assignment that I'm going to be leading for the next um, several weeks for the month of September. God has given me thus far three assignments to share with you. And these assignments are, um, the purpose of these assignments um, is to compel and provoke you to a more intense and powerful level of prayer. There are some rims of prayer that some of us and many of us, including myself, have not tapped into. But this is the season where God is going to usher us into earnest, fervent prayer. The Bible says that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. And so there are so many things that I desire from God. There are so many things that I desire to see and experience with God. And um, these things, my friends, are going to come through prayer. And so God has given me um, three assignments to share with you. And each week for the month of September, we are going to engage in these assignments. Now, I'm not going to tell you all three of them up front, but each week I will be announcing the um, assignment for that week. And so the first assignment that God has called us to is prayer partnership. God has called us to come together and to pray together in unity, in agreement, on one accord, and in harmony. And so the first assignment that we are going to kick off for the month of September is called prayer partnership. Matthew 18 verse 19 through 20 says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So the first assignment is for you to gather two or three people to partner with in prayer for three days. Each assignment that I bring to you will last for three days. So the first assignment is prayer partnership. And you are to gather together two or three people to pray with for three days. Now, you get to choose the order how you, of how you guys are going to pray together. You guys get to choose. I mean, it's your thing. You set it up. Um, I will encourage you, though, to get three people. And each day, one of those particular persons will lead the prayer. Now, you guys should also select the things that you're going to pray about and be in agreement about for those three days. So for three days, you are to get together with two or three people and you are to pray about the things that you guys have decided and agreed to pray about for three days. That's how you're going to develop your prayer partnership for the next three days. Now, we will be starting on Wednesday of this week. And so you have two days to get together and to select your prayer partners. Please pray about this thing. This is very serious. Choose people that are as serious as you are and as passionate as you are about prayer. Choose two or three people that you are going to partner with 
to pray for, to pray with, I'm sorry, for the next three days. And you guys are to choose the things, the situations that you are going to pray about. And I would advise you to and encourage you to, to seek God. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you these next three days and the people that you choose and in the things that you pray about. That's how you have power in your prayers. Okay? So for three days, you have to choose two or three people that you're going to partner with in prayer. And starting Wednesday, you're going to pray with these people. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this upcoming week. Now, I think that's an awesome assignment. There is power in unity when we pray together. There is power in unity in prayer. And I'm going to just kind of quickly go over a couple of occasions where I've seen people come together in prayer and the miraculous move of God took place because there are some things in your life that God wants to give birth to, but they're going to have to come through prayer. There are some, some visions that God has given you that he wants to birth through your spirit in prayer. There are some things that God has placed in your spirit that he wants to bring forth and that's going to only come forth through prayer, visions, miracles, signs and wonders. These are the desires of your heart that God has placed in your spirit that he wants to birth in your life, that he wants to birth through you in prayer. And so this is very vital that we come together. Now in Acts 12, verse 1 through 12, it says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched, stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Look at the devil. Even today, he is harassing the people of God. He is harassing the church. But it says, then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread. Okay, so when he had arrested Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people at the Passover. But this is what I love. And this is what I'm talking about, the power of of prayer, the power of corporate prayer, the power of unity in prayer. It says in verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. It's time for the church to come together as a body, as the body of Christ, and to pray for issues in this world, to pray for our nations, to pray for leadership, to pray for one another. It's time for us to come together and pray so that we may see the miraculous power and work of God like we never have before, especially in this season, especially in this time when the world is in total chaos. It says, and when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Many of you right now are bound by so many, so many things. Many of you are bound by depression and oppression. But oh, imagine if you get together with some Holy Spirit-filled believers, faith believers, and pray to our God. Imagine what's going to happen. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real. Look at God. But thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and down one street, and immediately the angel departed from Peter. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. The Bible says that Peter was kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for Peter by the church. The people were on one accord. They were unified. And let me tell you something. When we come together and we are unified in faith and in prayer, my God, that moves God. There is power 
when we earnestly and fervently and constantly stay before the Lord in prayer, something happens and it happened suddenly. That same night, God delivered Peter. And I'm here to tell you that if you gather together his name, two or three of you believe in God for the things that you have asked him for, something is going to happen suddenly in your life and in your situation. Thank you, Jesus. We're in a season of suddenly. God is prepared and he is ready to move suddenly and quickly on our behalf. But we must pray to our God and we must pray earnestly, fervently, and constantly for the things that God has placed in our spirits, for the situations that we find ourselves in, for healing, for deliverance, for the church, for the nation, for the government, for leadership, for pastors, for leaders, people all over the world and the things that are happening in the world. If my people who are called by my, by my name will humble themselves and pray and repent of their wicked ways, then we shall hear from heaven. Then God will heal the land. It's time for us to get together and pray and pray together in unity so that God can heal our land. God can heal our bodies. God can heal and deliver and save our loved ones. It's time for us to come together and to partner together in prayer. This is what this movement this week is all about. There's another instance in the Bible that I love where God moves suddenly when just two people came together and prayed. We're talking about several people here for Peter, but I'm talking about two people. And I'm talking about Paul and Silas. In Acts 16, verse 25 through 34, it says, Now it happened as we went to prayer. Look at that. As we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirits, Ah, hallelujah. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. They wanted to make mockery of them. They wanted to embarrass them. They wanted to make open bring open shame to Paul and Silas and that's what the enemy wants to do to us as the church that's what the enemy wants to do to your marriage in your marriage that's what the enemy wants to do in your finances and your situations and in your life but we're gonna pray this week we're gonna partner together with some powerful brothers and sisters in the Lord and we're gonna pray and we're gonna believe God for the things that we have asked him for amen and we're gonna bring shame to the devil and they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. And that was a lie. The devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. He lied. That was not the case. Paul and Silas were simply there to pray. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many strikes on them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them to the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Some of you right now feel as if you're as low as you can go. There is no, you can't get any lower than where you are. In your situation and in your life, you feel trapped, you feel bound, you feel oppressed and depressed, and you feel stuck. But this week, you're coming out. This week... You are coming out because we're going to pray and we're going to pray together and we're going to pray for one another and we're, gonna to be, and we're going to believe God for those things which we pray for. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this is your week for deliverance. You're coming out. Thank you, Jesus. But the Bible says in verse 25 that midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. They were complaining. <laughs> They weren't gossiping, but the Bible says that they were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening. See, some of the world is watching us, people of God. And during the time of crisis and chaos and difficult situations in our lives and challenges and embarrassing moments, they 
are watching us. The world is watching us, but we're going to keep on praying. And the world is going to also witness as they watched a powerful move of God because of our prayers. Amen. The Bible says, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, hey, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everybody chains were loose. I'm telling you, this week when we get together with our prayer partners and we begin to pray about our situations, we begin to pray for our nations, pray for our children, families, marriages, sickness. When we begin to pray about these things together in harmony and on one accord, there's going to be a sudden movement of God. Everybody bands are going to be loose. Thank you, Jesus. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called the loud voice saying, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. You're still here. You are still here. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And this week, God is going to birth some things through your life, through prayer. The things that he has placed in your spirit, he's going to give birth to those things through prayer. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. This is the jailer. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do? To be saved. That loved one that you have been praying for to be saved. That husband, that wife, that family member. This week when you pray. Mm, this week when you partner with your prayer partners and you pray about this thing. Hey, you're going to see a sudden move of God. He's going to birth this thing through your prayers. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. We're talking about the same jailers that was watching over the prison. Took Paul and Silas and washed their stripes. The power of prayer. The power of unified corporate prayer. The power of prayer partnership. And immediately he and his family were baptized. Now he had brought them into his house. He set food before them and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. This week, this week, I encourage you, take part of this assignment and watch how God move on your behalf. Choose your prayer partners prayerfully, wisely, and carefully. And then partner with them on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And watch how God moves. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the things that you ought to pray for. And those things that God things that God has already placed in your spirit, put those things on the line. Put them on the table and get with your prayer partners and pray about these things. The Bible says, when two or three, two or three, Jesus says again, some version of the some versions says, surely, truly, I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth. Concerning anything they ask according to his will. According to his will. It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Please join me this week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in prayer partnership. Choose your partners and pray for the next three days. Pray for the next three days together in unity and in faith and watch how suddenly and quickly God moves on your behalf and pay attention to my page I'll be posting scriptures about prayer I will be encouraging you all week I myself will also be joining in in this prayer partnership and I'm going to come together perhaps the end of next week and maybe even live or via conference call for us all to come together to share our experiences and to share our testimonies of what God did for us these next these three days of praying together in unity. I expect great testimonies. I expect to hear great reports from you. And I'm just so excited about what God is preparing to do for us this week. Hey. Get on my page. If something happens the first day, tell me about it. Let the world know what God is doing in your life and what God is doing as a result of your obedience and being a part of this movement. 
It's going to be awesome. It is going to be powerful. Hey, thank you for listening in. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to um, sharing this experience with you and coming back together again next week so we can all testify about the goodness of God. Thank you for joining me. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.